Stop saying you're a filmmaker if you're not. Stop using that word. You're the equivalent of someone working at a fast food restaurant and calling themselves a chef. Isn't there some song that's like, it's been a while since I've done one of these. It sounds like a dude singing with marbles in his throat. It's been a while since I could. That's what's going through my head right now. Uh, before I start this rant. A um, couple of things. I know it's been a while. I, every time I say it, I can't stop myself. It's been moments. I haven't, I don't know how to even bring it in without doing that now at this point. I know we haven't talked a lot. I know that we've done like a lot of interviews and chatting up that way and kind of going down that path. And uh, the reason we did that is because like, I'm kind of just bored talking about camera gear. I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm a little bit over it. I'm over camera gear discussions. Um, I like talking about it. I still do because it's part of who I am, but it's not the only thing I want to do. I kind of, not kind of, I definitively at this point in my life, in my career, want to pursue and chase down ways to make myself better. I want to become a better filmmaker. Uh, and that's a separate rant altogether. Uh, two things that I, I kind of want to just go over in this video. One, one is why we moved away from a red. Uh, we barely use a red. In fact, I, I'm doing a test with uh, a company and they asked for some red stuff, red footage. And so I was going back through cards and, and the last time I shot red was last year, right? Now I know part of that's the pandemic, sure, that, that caused it, right? But in cases of evergreen reasons, it still has been a very long time since I shot some footage. I had to dig around to find something. Um, and the reason why is because uh, we have different cameras and we've proved that before. You know, GH5 right here, this little guy. Uh, the GH5 has done us very well and it's done done great and we've made a lot of money with it. We've talked about that. Hopefully you've seen those videos. If you haven't, they exist for you. This video though is talking about where we're going now and why we left red and kind of, and frankly at this point, we also have left Panasonic. Save for the fact that I'm vlogging on a Panasonic and I have this one right here as a prop. Um, we don't use them as much. We like the GH5S, but we haven't been using the GH5. And the reason why is uh, a lot of reasons. So let's kind of break down that stuff. First off, let's talk about the GH5. As you guys know, this channel, a ton of people come to this channel or came to this channel and we're very grateful uh, for that audience, but they came here because you know we did these red versus GH5 tests and proved that at the end of the day, the camera, the GH5, super powerful camera, and it still is one of the best cameras on the market in my opinion. I think the GH5S is like maybe my favorite camera um, that I've used in a very long time next to an Alexa or something, but I, I love the GH5, like I, the GH5S. I love both of them. They've been great. And we love Panasonic. They've been awesome. But there's some things that have happened in our career where we've, whoops, where we've needed to adapt. And one of those things that we wanted to adapt was a little more modular type vibe, right? Without always having to bring out the red because the red is sitting over here. The red, for what it is, I mean, it's a bulky beast of a gimmick. And sometimes it's nice to have that. And then sometimes it's nice to be able to go running gun. So we still use our GH fives when we're doing smaller projects where we don't need a big footprint or we're not showing off to the client or whatever it might be. By the way, I hope you guys like my Dr. Cox from scrubs inspired haircut because I can't get one currently. Anyway, so GH five has done well and we've seen a lot of cool stuff come out of it. Like all this kind of stuff. And then we've seen a lot of cool stuff when we tested against red, we proved that that worked, but then something happened. Something happened that I never thought would happen. And I have to apologize first and foremost on this channel for what I'm about to say, because I was wrong. I was wrong. And the reason I was wrong is because though we love this camera, we've sort of adopted a new workflow and that workflow is completely different. And what that workflow is, is first off, we've primarily left Premiere. We no longer edit in Premiere and we've moved to a different editing platform and we couldn't be happier. In fact, Jeff is working remote uh, in another state that's a good ways away, even though he has good internet, still a very far way, ways away from me. And he's able to work on projects. Melissa, the other Jeff, our other editor, uh, Melissa is able to edit projects and just swap a DRP file, which you can do with Premiere too, but it makes it nice when it's all enveloped in one sweet piece. 
and which leads to where I'm going to go with this, right? So we've changed our workflow. I'm going to show you some footage. This. came from that. Yep, we made that jump to black magic and I hate even saying it cuz I know on this channel somebody find it. You can post a clip. Maybe make a gif. I don't care. I trolled this camera so hard. I, I trolled all the black magic cameras including the Pocket 6K which I think is one of the best cameras on the planet now. Certainly for people regardless of budget, I think it's a fantastic camera. It does what it's supposed to do. And now we're shooting on a G2. This is an Ursa G2. We own not just one, but two of them. Um, Jeff has one and now I have one because we couldn't help ourselves because we fell so in love with how great they worked for the price point, right? I'm not saying it's always about price, but as we've told you, if I can't 3X it, why do it, right? And so right now my clients, I'm very lucky, I'm very smart during COVID, a lot of people are out of work. A lot of people don't have jobs. A lot of people are freaking out about money. Well, we're okay. And the reason we're okay is because we, you know, we planned well. And part of that is not overextending ourselves by buying a bunch of useless equipment. This does what it needs to do for 98% of the projects. And when we need to do something red that's awesome like this. At the University of South Alabama, we inspire. We illuminate. We generate ideas that propel our region forward. We transform our students into leaders who have the confidence, knowledge, and ability to change their communities for the better. Together, we make a lasting impact on the world around us. We are your unit. We can do that, right? So we can take those and use them the way we want to, but this guy does very good work. As you saw in the other video, it works. And so we're into that black magic thing. Now, I don't necessarily love everything about black magic. I still have my issues. In fact, I have a lot of issues and I'm not gonna make this about a review because again, that's not what I'm doing. I'm bringing it up to say that I need to apologize to this audience. I am apologizing because I allowed myself to get a little bit, uh, not sold out, but a little bit in the way of like getting bypassed and, and not looking at something when I should have. And so now I'm, I'm on the, that black magic bandwagon. Um, it's a black magic woman, so to speak. And so now I'm very much into that and I enjoy it. Uh, would I still rather shoot on a, on a Alexa? Yeah, of course, always. I just prefer the workflow. 
but I do think this is the next best thing. I do prefer this over my red, I'll tell you that much. I think look for look, the red, there's reasons why I shoot red as a film stock, but um, if I'm doing a general workflow piece, I enjoy this. And I've done all kinds of work with it and it's been a good workhorse. It's a little bit bulkier, which I like, so it fits on the shoulder well and all that kind of stuff. You guys know all that. I prefer this over the Evil One. No offense, Panasonic. I just didn't like the build of that camera. I, I needed something that felt robust. I'm a clumsy dude. If you guys know anything about me at all, you know I break shit regularly. Yes, I made a Limp Biscuit reference. And that's how I kind of approach things. I need something that feels a little more robusto and this feels that way. So as odd as it sounds, as much of a rant as it's gonna be, two things I said I was gonna do. A, yeah, we moved past Panasonic. We still use them, but they're not our primary caregivers. <laughs> they're not our primary breadwinners anymore. They are uh, here, they're tools that we use. Right now, our primary breadwinner, aside from our brains, again, is frankly black magic products, right? Even all the way down through DaVinci. We love DaVinci, we use the hell out of DaVinci. It works really well, we like the workflow with it. And maybe we'll do some talking about that at some point, but at this point, that's what we're doing. And I think it's important to talk about because I, I just want people to think about shifting perspectives. Don't rush out and buy a new camera right now. Don't use that COVID money unless you're in the position to do so um, or you need to, but just always think about how you can upscale and do that. The second part of the rant, quick question for you. If you, and maybe I'll just split this off. I don't know if I want to go into the second part of the rant. I'm going to be honest with you. Like I really wanted to talk about, I'm, I'm really annoyed with all these online ads for filmmakers. Here's the thing right? And it's very simple. I'm not saying you're not a filmmaker. Yes, I am. I am saying you're not a filmmaker. You're not a filmmaker if you've never made a film. And I'm not being a jerk, but I'm just saying stop trolling these people online so that you can get more sales. You're not a filmmaker. Here's how you become a filmmaker. First, shoot film. That's one step. Shoot film, literally shoot film. Um, that's one way if you want to get technical about it. The second way is give me a long form piece of content over 60 minutes. I'd say 72 minutes, but over 60 minutes that has a full narrative flow. And I'm not bashing anybody who uses that title because God bless, there are a lot of people that use that title and are fantastic content creators. I'm just drawing the line on it, specifically pointing the finger at anybody who's using that term to market stuff in a way that is not necessarily... Uh, fair and even. Like I just recently saw somebody put up a movie poster for a film they made and on the back of the movie poster it had their name as DOP, right? Director of Photography, and they had a common ASC. Now if this dude's in the ASC, then I, ladies and gentlemen, can not only walk on water, I can fly and I can rip Superman's heart out because I've got that kind of power, right? Me and the Hulk, nothing. Hulk can't even touch me. I'm more invincible than the Hulk. That's the kind of level of lying that it is when someone puts an ASC behind their name and they're not. And I know they're not. I know they're not in the ASC because they haven't shot anything to be in the ASC. They couldn't even buy their way into the ASC if they wanted to because they don't have enough credit to get there yet, right? They also then put ACE behind their name. Come on, are you serious? So it's the kind of, that's what tells me that's happening in the culture a little bit is that I'm seeing more and more people claim to be filmmakers and claim to be cinematographers. Here's my point in that. I'm a filmmaker. If you don't believe me, IMDB me. Go ahead. I got five credits to my name. Well, more than that, but I mean, I got five features to my name and some of them suck. They're awful, terrible, but you know what? I'm still proud of them because I worked hard and a lot of other people did too. Those exist and that's not me patting myself on the back. I'm not doing a goldie. I'm just simply saying like, I earned that title and I worked my way through it to get to that point and you can too. It was an aspiration for me and that's what I pursued. I pursued the dream of doing it and I made it happen. I didn't just pick up a camera, walk outside, shoot some daylight natural crap and call myself a filmmaker. That's bull and I'm done with it. Even Philip Bloom does that, right? But Philip Bloom's a legitimate DP. He's a legitimate cinematographer. Philip Bloom is a legitimate filmmaker. And he may call them films and we want to imitate those who we think are great, but please, for the love of God, stop calling them films when they're not films. It's just a short. There's no narrative structure. And again, troll me all you want on it. I'm just making a point to encourage you to become a filmmaker. Prove me wrong. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Prove me wrong. I... I don't know how many years ago, two years ago, whenever it was, said that I would never use black magic and here I am. They proved me wrong. People proved me wrong. And here I am making that change. I'm challenging you, prove me wrong. Go be a better filmmaker than anybody in the world, but prove why you can be a filmmaker first. Don't just throw your name out there and say that you are. And to those guys and gals that are out there marketing it, when you're literally showing them not how to do anything, if you're talking about auto, and I'm sorry, it's a very touchy deal with me. And again, this is all my opinion. If you're literally talking about 
auto exposure and, and auto focus and you're calling yourself a filmmaker, get the fuck out. Seriously, pack your shit, get out, get out of the space, just stop. Stop using that word. You're the equivalent of someone working at a fast food restaurant and calling themselves a chef. It just doesn't work that way. And frankly, you might have the ability because there are those people in the world that work at a fast food restaurant. I know one, his name's JP, he's fantastic, or did. Fantastic, worked at a Waffle House and now is one of the best chefs I've ever met. There's chances for those things to happen, but for the love of God, he's a rarity and there are exceptions to the rules always and I believe in it and I hope you're one of them. But if you're not, don't call yourself a chef if you're still working in the back of a fast food restaurant yet. But if you have aspirations to get there, then start making those changes. Start pushing forward. Now's your chance, especially right now. Now's the greatest time ever to figure it out. Production is an upheaval, right? I think we're going to get hurt by this, by the way. It's not going to go well for a lot of us as filmmakers, like truly, like the filmmaker filmmakers, not the ones that are out there making it up. So now's your chance. Be the best content creator on the planet. Just go make something. Get out there and do it. And don't get caught up in the namesake of it. Stop using Macs if you can't afford them. Who gives a shit? Use a PC. Make it work. Uh, stop buying cameras you can't afford. If you can't shoot red, shoot with your cell phone. Just tell story. I promise you'll be a better filmmaker if you tell a story first. No one's going to care otherwise. And for the love of God, stop putting fake letters behind your name. If you have not earned the A, B, C, S, C credits, please stop. Stop. You can't do that. That's like imitating a soldier. It's, I mean, it's not quite that bad. I mean, that's a different thing, but it's bad. It's very bad. I just want to encourage you to go create, go be you. And if your goal is to be a filmmaker, then target it, go after it and become one. Give us that stuff. Be a filmmaker. Don't just say that you are one. Stop saying you're a filmmaker if you're not going to go after it. But just stop it. Just please do that. And again, I apologize. I was wrong about black magic. I'm not wrong about this because I believe in you. And that's my rant. And it's been a long one. I know. But that seems to be the new trend on YouTube. What the f